Hey, what's going on guys? It's Cole here, and today I'm bringing you another guide for the brand new Black Ops Cold War Zombies map, Mauer der Toten. In this video, we're going to be going over how to complete the full main Easter egg quest of the map. And just before we get into this, I'm going to put two lists on screen. One of them is everything that you are absolutely required to know before going into this Easter egg, and a second list of things that are not entirely required for completion, but that I would highly recommend that you know and do in your game before you even start any of these steps. That applies for both, whether it is required or recommended. I would say do all of these things, check all of these off the list in your game before you even start looking at the steps further on in the video. So if you're just starting up your game, pause, do everything on this list, and then come back. So without any further ado, let's get into it. To start the main quest, you're going to want to come down to Klaus and activate him, or activate him from one of the radios, and then come down to this wall in the sewer access, put a little ping on the floor for him that he'll go up to, and he should punch the wall down. Once you are told to find a way through the wall behind the bricks, simply get the laser version of the Cerberus and hold it down until it fully cuts out a hole in the wall. Once you are in the lab, Valentina must be stopped. Once you're inside the lab, there will be a lot of dialogue that has to play out, but once it ends, this little thing here is going to open up, there's going to be a barrier around it that will go down, and you have to grab the three canisters out of it to move forward. Once you have the canisters, you're going to want to go around the map and find three of these little green generators to put the canisters inside of. In our game, the three of them were in the service access where you just saw me put it in, here in the alleyway up on East Berlin streets, and right here against this wall in the ghost station. Once you have found your three generators and put the canisters into them, you will want to go back into the lab, shoot this casing with the Cerberus, and grab the device out of it. Once you have the lure device, you're going to want to go back around to your generators with it, throwing it down on the ground, which will cause it to spawn in three Tempests at each one. And once you have them spawned in, you simply want to kill them anywhere near the generator, like they can be anywhere close. It will fill the canister up, charging it and making it ready to bring back to the lab. When a canister is ready to be brought back to the lab, simply interact with it and it will slow you down, much like the canisters from Outbreak. In fact, it is exactly like the canisters from Outbreak, including the field upgrade that you get while you're carrying it, that if you don't know is a large blast that will clear enemies around you but you will want to simply bring the canisters back to the device where you originally grabbed them from. Repeat this process once for each canister and you will be ready to move on to the next step. For the next step, we need Klaus to stop a train. So what you're going to need to do is get Klaus active in your map before coming down to the switch control room and flipping the switch then, once you have Klaus and the switch has been flipped, simply go into the go station, cross the tracks that you're on this side here, and put the ping for Klaus right about where I do in my gameplay here, and he will lock in and stop the train for you. It is important to note that only the fully upgraded version of Klaus is able to stop the train. If you don't have him fully upgraded, he will simply get run over by it. Once the train has been stopped, you only have a very limited time on it, so make sure that you jump in and grab this key card and this bomb that I do in my footage here. Once you have the bomb, bring it back to the conversion unit in the lab. You are missing uranium. What we have to do now is to go into the room where you build Klaus, which is the safe house, and interact with this computer and browse through the files enough until you get the access denied message. For this next step, we need to build a hacking device for Klaus, which for us means going around the map and shooting at things with the Cerberus and grabbing parts out of them. The first thing you're going to want to shoot is up on the spawn rooftop, where you shoot this antenna. Next, you will want to go down to the ghost station and shoot this panel on the wall. And lastly, you will want to go to the electronics store and find radios that look exactly like these two, and shoot them with the Cerberus until one of them gives you the part that we're looking for. Well, Once you've gotten all three of those parts, bring them back to Klaus and build them for him. Well 
Once this is done, these computers around the map are going to turn on and allow you to access the satellite, but you only need to do this twice and you can use each computer more than once, so you can simply just use the one in Klaus's room and there's no reason not to. But call in the satellite, it will spawn a bunch of enemies, and you will have to go and clear them out to get the uranium. Once you've cleared out the enemies, you'll have the uranium left over from the megatons, and you will want to bring these pieces of uranium to two buildable tables on opposite sides of Berlin. There is one in a tent on the west side, and one in a tent on the east side. Once you've crafted each piece of uranium into a uranium device, simply bring them to this zipline that comes out of the sign on the building with speed cola on the roof, and put one of the uranium devices on each side. Once you have a uranium device on both sides of the zipline, they will go inwards towards each other, collide, and combine, also stabilizing so that you get that game wipe timer off your screen and you don't have to worry about it anymore. Once you get the cleansed rock down in the street, you will want to pick it up and bring it back down to that device in the lab again, combining it with the bomb. Once you have done so, you will want to repeat this whole process from launching the satellite once again. However, it should be noted that once you put the second cleansed rock into the bomb, the boss fight is going to start. So until you and your team have all the perks and weapons that you want to, to feel comfortable doing the boss fight, I would not put the second rock in, go ahead and make the rock, but don't deposit the rock into the bomb until you are ready. Personally, I recommend having at least Jug, Quick Revive, and Stamina up, and also trying to get as many members of your team to have a Cerberus as possible, as it is a super effective weapon in this boss fight. Some people might think that because the ray gun is in the map, it is worth putting off the boss fight until you and your teammates have ray guns, and while I haven't personally used it in the boss fight yet, I can say that the Cerberus is so good that I would say it is not even worth taking all the time and effort to get ray guns in your game. You're just going to get the rounds too high, the enemies are going to become too spongy. It's worth doing it at a lower round with Cerberuses over getting the ray gun. I would also recommend getting some of the new Gersh devices, as well as either War Machines or Death Machines, depending on your preference. The War Machine is going to be for taking down special enemies as well as clearing hordes of normal zombies, whereas the Death Machine is going to be purely for dealing damage to the boss very quickly. Once the boss fight is started, you honestly don't have all that much to worry about. She really only has three core mechanics to the fight, and all of them can be broken down, explained super easily, and also taken advantage of super easily. To get her most dangerous mechanic out of the way first, she does have a wipe mechanic, which is very clearly telegraphed, you'll get an effect on your screen, it's gonna make a ton of noise, it's gonna be this blue charging orb in her hands. Whenever you see this, just put some cover between you and Valentina, and you should be fine. I've never taken damage if there's something between the two of us, neither has the partner that I've been running the Easter egg with a couple times, so I'm pretty sure that all you have to do is just get some cover between you and the boss whenever this mechanic comes up. Now to go into detail about her sort of medium attack, it's this rain of ether shards that she sends down on one player at a time, which is the super important thing to note here, because if you're playing in co-op, if one player is getting attacked by this at a time, she's not focusing on anyone else at all during that period of time. So the one player who's getting shot at should run around to avoid the shots, because they do shred your armor, and having no armor in this fight can be kind of bad, because if some zombies sneak up on you, you're going to go down pretty quickly. So while the one player is running around, any other player who's not getting shot at can focus on just dumping as much damage into her as possible, as she is completely vulnerable while pulling off this attack, and honestly, this is the easiest time to get damage in on the boss. And the third core mechanic that this boss takes advantage of is a healing mechanic, where she will rise a bunch of bodies into the air, where she drains energy back from them and it heals her. This is a really safe thing to deal with. Uh, she won't be attacking you while she's doing this. She's just gonna be regenerating health until you shoot all of those bodies out of the air. So all you have to do is just very quickly shoot them down to prevent her from regening as much health as possible. And with that, you should have all the knowledge that you need to bring down Valentina and complete this Easter egg. And with that, you guys now have everything you need to know about how to complete the main quest on the brand new Black Ops Cold War Zombies map, Mauer der Toten. There is a little bit more past the boss fight that I didn't get into, but I don't want to spoil it, and it's completely self-explanatory from the boss fight on. They literally tell you what to do, so don't worry about it. You'll be fine. I just don't want to spoil the ending of the map for you. If you guys enjoyed, feel free to go ahead and leave a like, a comment, or a subscription. Any of those would be greatly appreciated. If you're looking for any more Mauer der Toten guides, I have more up on the channel already. 
and I have more coming soon, so feel free to go ahead and check the channel or the playlist in the end cards of the video for more. If you're looking to catch some Howard or Toten content live on Twitch, or just any other Zombies content live on Twitch, I will have a link to my channel on screen and the description below. I stream on there all the time, and we'd love to have you guys come and chill out and chat. But with all that being said, once again, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope to see all of you guys back here next time, and I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Goodbye.